Well, I'm finally ready to finish with Renaissance Man. A little bit more to tell you, though. By the end, basically, they all become Renaissance Men. I'll, so I'll start right here. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you get to see that very end, but the voice, as they're marching along, the voice is Lou Cass, the so drill sergeant, and he's chanting, uh, Hamlet's mama was a queen, bought it in the final scene. He's <laughs> using Shakespeare. He's quoting Shakespeare. He's changed his mind. He's accepted that. And Rago also has decided to go back into the army for another stint. And uh, and he's marching with them. I mean, I uh, remember when I was teaching about <clears throat> a Renaissance man, I, I said uh, the guy had his, I don't know if it was Leon Battista Alberti, had himself painted on a horse as a soldier, but reading a book. He was a soldier and a student. And that's the thing about... Uh, when Melvin says, ain't that something, that Horatio is the one that's left. He's a soldier and, or, or no, there's two left. Uh, Fontenbrass, I think, is the soldier and Horatio is the student. He says, ain't that something? Well, that's because they have become not just soldiers, but students. They've all become Renaissance men. men. Now, why I circled this, I don't want to go into this too much, but... I, be, I watched this so many times, I began to get very curious about these names. Where did they come up with these names? Is this a coincidence? Now you decide for yourself, but let me tell you of some of the things that I suspect. Bill, well, that's a nickname for William. His, his nickname becomes Shakespeare later on. Rago, where that comes from? I don't know. Uh, it, it's a short, it, it's an abbreviation for Regular Army Go. Now, I found that out by looking it up, but that might be just a coincidence. Jackson Leroy, or Leroy Jackson. Well, Jackson, uh, Stonewall Jackson, was a general uh, in the United States, and there was also Andrew Jackson. Uh, Leroy, uh, that, that's the French is Le Roi, uh, which is the king. And in, uh, in uh, Henry V, uh, there's a, a joke built in there, actually, where uh, the king, Henry V, goes around disguised, and they ask what his name is, and, and he says, uh, <clears throat> I think he says his name is Leroy, and the one says, that's a Welsh name, isn't it? Well, that's a joke, because that's, that's French. But it means the king, it was disguised. He was disguised, he was the king, Le Roi. Uh, Melvin, Melvin... Well, I don't know. Uh, Melville is one of the most f uh, wrote one of the most famous books in the United States called Moby Dick. Uh, so you're going to see. Uh, I'm going to point out uh, philosophers, writers, and soldiers. Miranda Myers. Miranda is the last female character that Shakespeare created. She is the one and only female character in um, in The Tempest, uh, daughter of a, a wizard. Benitez, well, Benito Mussolini was the leader of uh, Italy during World War II. Uh, I don't know, uh, you know, if that's a coincidence. Montgomery Jamal, Montgomery was a soldier, uh, was a general for the uh, Allies in World War II. I think his nickname was Monty. He was quite popular among the troops. Roosevelt Nathaniel Hobbes. Well, let's start with Hobbes. Hobbes was a philosopher, an English philosopher of major importance. Roosevelt, there were two Roosevelts in the United States. There was Teddy Roosevelt, who was a soldier and a scholar. Uh, he, a very interesting man, really. And Franklin Delano Roosevelt, his grandson, I believe, was the president during World War II. Nathaniel was his real name. Nathaniel, well, if you say Nathaniel Hall, uh, to uh, English speakers, that sounds like you were going to say Nathaniel Hawthorne, who is a very famous American uh, writer. He wrote The Scarlet Letter. Brian Davis, well, Davis, Jefferson Davis, was the leader of the, uh, of the rebels of the South, of the Confederation in the American Civil War. Tommy Lee Hayward, Tommy Lee, the kids tell me, was a famous drummer. I didn't know that. And he is the guy who's drumming on the desk. Hayward, I think, was maybe a, 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 a writer. I, I'm not sure. 
Uh, and Lee, of course, Lee was the general, uh, very famous general, a brilliant general for the South in the American Civil War. Lou Cass, now I puzzled over that one. I thought Lewis Carroll, but some student suggested maybe it was Lucas, George Lucas, a film director, a very famous film director. Emily, his daughter. Well, Emily Dickinson uh, is one of the most famous American women writers, poets. Marie Layton, that's the, the woman he gets interested in. Well, Marie, probably the first and maybe most famous uh, woman scientist was Marie Curie, or Marie Curie, uh, who discovered radiation. Colonel James, Henry James, was an American uh, uh, writer. Well, you know, you, you judge for yourself. I, I don't, <laughs> you know, myself, I don't think that was coincidence. I, I, think, uh, I think the writer of that movie uh, had some, some of this in mind, I think. Uh, John Philip Sousa, I, I use this as an opportunity to, to, to point out to the students that as you get to the end, the music is, is, does everything. Well, if you didn't see the last five minutes, you maybe didn't realize this. But they pull out all the stops for an American on, on patriotic sounding music. John Philip Sousa, he was nicknamed the March, March King. Uh, and uh, that and other things as well. Uh, right there in the end, they 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 go to uh, well, just very patriotic songs that have that effect on Americans. They may well not on those of you who are not American. Uh, okay, well, I'm going to leave that, but I have another video. We're going to now go on with the chronological survey.